Uh, so welcome to our audience around the world. Uh, thanks for tuning in uh, into the Greatness Engineering Show. I'm your host today. My name is Mireille Tulekima. I'm the founder of the Mireille Tulekima Global Leadership Organization. Uh, the, that's the organization sponsoring this show. And last year, uh, as part of our mission, we've launched the uh, Greatness Engineering uh, Movement. And this movement is about, uh, you know, inspiring individuals and you know, empowering them to, to define, you know, and design their own success and uh, make sure that they, be they become the best that they can be. So we basically provide uh, them with uh, sustainable and authentic development experience and leadership as well, so that they can uh, do extraordinary things in, in their environment or in uh, wherever they are in their communities. So this show is really about, you know, bringing in people with so a, a very good story, a story of triumph and uh, some good knowledge to inspire the audience to, uh, to know that they can also do the same and, uh, and, and really push, push them to, uh, to take massive action in, in their life. So today I have, you know, we've, we've had some amazing guests this month and uh, today is not different. We have two gentlemen uh, from the US uh, so we have Samuel and um, Samuel Nick Burker. I hope I'm not uh, killing the name. And Ryan Andraco. So you you get the time to rectify if, if I'm not pronouncing your name very well. I mean because there's an accent. There's actually so many accents in, in me: the French one, the Australian one. So it's mixing a lot of things. So Samuel is you know specialized in uh, the 21st. Uh, century financial strategies and is focusing on really helping people establish um, a legacy. So he'll, he'll talk a little bit more about it and explain to us how he does it. And it's basically, you know, by gathering foundation on financial habits, mindset, and uh, behavior as well, and see how they actually uh, interact and, and uh, help us to, to build legacies. And it, it's gonna go in detail with that. That's something that I'm very curious about as well. Uh, so his passion is to empower high achieving men and women uh, with financial foundation essential to maximize, you know, to, to help them to be fulfilled and create uh, their, their own legacy. He's, he's also the host of, uh, he's the host of a podcast called um, the fuel, uh, fuel your legacy, and uh, so he's uh, gonna tell us a little bit more about about that as well. Um, for Brian, Brian defines himself as a dude, so uh, <laughs> just a dude. So that's 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 interesting. Uh, exploring, you know, endless possibilities of the world, and trying to to do it through positivity and gratitude. And so Brian basically followed a traditional path until he had, uh, I would say, a, a breakthrough to uh, to really, you know, bring his life to the next level. And well, we're, we're going to hear a lot about it today. He also uh, is also uh, also the podcast called "Just Get Started," where he's uh, predominantly interviewed entrepreneur founders and people who generally want to um, bring their life to the next level and get out, outside their comfort zone. So uh, Brian and Samuel, welcome, welcome to the show. And uh, I just you know, want to reiterate it and, and tell you that it's an honor for me and a privilege to have you as guest. And I really thank you for your time. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the next hour with you. Uh, so what I'm going to ask you is to introduce yourself, um, you know, in, uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, tell us who you are, uh, how you came up to do what you do, and, uh, and, and really talk us through your story. And, uh, and, and so that we know how 
you navigated through your journey and uh, how you, you came about to do what you do right now. So I'm going to start with Samuel. Um, and uh, so Samuel, the, the floor is yours. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Muriel, for uh, putting this together. I know that getting multiple people in one place, it's hard enough to get two people for a podcast, to get three people for a show. That's a, that's a big thing. So I appreciate that. I'm excited to meet Brian and learn more about him. Uh, as far as my story goes, I actually started out, I'm the seventh of 11 kids. So giant family. You can kind of see the, our family picture in the background here, right? Mm -hmm. There. That's, our, yeah, that's my that's family, right, yeah. all, mm -hmm. all 11 kids and two parents, um, wow. and that was at my grandpa's funeral, but uh, grew up in, in basically poverty for, for where we lived. Um, our, our house, we had very little running water. Um, our house had actually been condemned due to a faulty foundation um, because the people who had it before us tried to build a second story on a single story foundation, so it just didn't work. House had been condemned. We moved in. Um, and, and this is shortly after I was born, so there was, mm -hmm. uh, was maybe less than a year old when our family moved into this house. And throughout life, there was, uh, my parents were Pizza Hut drivers, and they worked odd jobs in construction, got into probably every uh, MLM, uh, make money quick thing that we could mm -hmm. think of, just trying to provide for our families, grew up on government assistance, church assistance, um, anything to really provide for our families. And, uh, or to provide for our family. And uh, at one point we even were dumpster diving in the Albertsons uh, dumpster for, for food. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just, for, for me, the funny thing is you grow up in that life and you don't really know anything different. It's just mm -hmm. life and you appreciate it. It's exciting. It's still some fond memories. Uh, but as I got older, um, I started to be more aware of some of the abusive sides of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, where when when there's financial stress and um, there's a higher risk of divorce there's definitely domestic violence and uh and physical abuse mental abuse emotional abuse and um, so there's a lot of issues there and then as i got older into my pre-teens or early teens i struggled with anxiety depression um never really had suicidal thoughts or anything but i know that those come for a lot mm -hmm. of people and I had, my mom was at the time, my mom was kind of the enforcer in the household. And if you didn't do what she wanted, then you would get beat. And my way of protecting myself and my siblings was to become my mom mm -hmm. um, and make sure that stuff got done around the house. And it wasn't until I was probably 14-ish years old, maybe a little bit younger, 13, 14 years old, and I was enforcing some things that I wanted, my will on my little brothers and sisters. And my older brother came home and he said, no, this is not okay. So he held me there, just like wrapped me up like a wrestling wrap and just held me there so I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And after I was done freaking out, screaming at him, he said, hey, Sam, this is how everybody feels emotionally when you walk into the room. Mm -hmm. And, and that was the first time it really dawned on me that I had been leading out of fear or that I had even replaced my mom in that aspect um, because my identity and what I believed I was doing was serving and protecting mm -hmm. and, and helping my family avoid further abuse from my mom. And so it was a, it was a little bit of an identity shift, but it was awesome um, because I remembered my mom, sorry, my grandpa, a, a truck drive with my grandpa, the one that had passed away here. Um, we were driving home from the dump one day after we were taking stuff to the landfill and he just turned down the radio, put his hand on my knee and said, you know, Sam, uh, one day you, you could, your voice, it's pleasant to listen to one day you could be on the radio and maybe even be a leader. And so my identity from a young age was that I was a leader. My voice was a leader. People like listening to me. <laughs> but what I found in that moment with my brother is that I had been using it wrongfully. And so I took that experience and when I was old enough to go to college, I went into psychology trying to find out why all the abuse had happened, why I developed the way I had. And I found that it was, um, the, the psychology is the study of the brain based on brain structure, mm -hmm. study of behavior based on the structure of the brain. So then I went into neuropsychology to really understand why and how the brain gets structured the way it does. Mm -hmm. And I found out it's due to your chemical environment that impacts how your brain gets structured. So then I went into biochemistry <laughs> to find out what chemicals are affecting it. 
which then met, led me into a little bit of sociology to find out, well, why would somebody choose to stay in a negative chemical environment that's not serving them? And generationally, why is this happening? And I found that the lower socioeconomic status uh, of individuals, they're struggling with more of these social issues, anxiety, depression, divorce, um, suicide, domestic <laughs> violence, than the higher social classes. Now, it's not that the higher social classes don't have issues, because they do, mm -hmm. but it's different. what happens is they have the finances or the resources, we could call it, to actually get the help that they need, where the lower social classes are going to turn to addictions, they're going to turn to things that aren't helpful because they just don't have the resources to to get help to get the help that they need so once i recognized that um, that really is what solidified my passion for just teaching people how money works mm -hmm. teaching them what the foundation is and um, why the foundation is legacy and, and then core values and fulfillment why that is the, the foundation and then how to build those how to answer those questions for yourself so that your whole life is then built in alignment with how you want to be remembered in 200 years from now um, and you're not losing sight of well i'm just chasing money but totally unfulfilled or i'm just chasing fulfillment but can't feed my family mm -hmm. right there's, there's so many different areas that we need to pay attention to and and my goal is to bring those all localize them make it simple to understand and to teach people good practices that they mm -hmm. can use with their money no matter what country they're in right because money we could easily get rid of the word money and just say value because mm -hmm. every country and every interaction and every individual value can be added and if i'm giving non-monetary value no matter what the monetary exchange is whether i'm in aussie currency or american currency or or I don't know, Brazilian currency, I'm adding non-monetary value, I'm going to be getting monetary value back in return. So we think in terms of what value are we adding back rather than what we're getting out of society. It's, it's quite interesting. It's, uh, I'm, I'm actually quite fascinated to, to, you know, fascinating to know a little bit more, but I'll, I'll get uh, Brian to introduce himself and we'll come back and uh, with a few questions on, 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 on the assignment. Uh, Brian, go, go ahead. Who are you? What you know? Oh. You are yeah, the You know, we want to know a little bit more uh, about you. Absolutely. <laughs> Mira, hopefully uh, summertime over there is doing well for y'all. Um, I, I have a totally different story than Sam. There's probably some similarities as well, but, um, you know, I guess I'll start by saying, you know, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version because I can probably go long-winded on some stuff. Um, you know, I, I'm from upstate New York uh, here in the U.S., middle class family, you know, pretty good upbringing for the most part. When I when I look back and reflect on it, for the most part, it's pretty good upbringing. Um, had a lot of good um, grandparents around me that were really good mentors for me that, you know, I learned from and, and stuff like that. Um, and as I grew up, you know, one of the things for me that has kind of changed the course of my life the last four or five years is as I grew up, I just kind of had the traditional life like most people are supposed to do, right? Hey, you're supposed to go get an education, then you're supposed to go to college, then you're supposed to get a job and do something you kind of like, right? Mm -hmm. um, that you're quote unquote passionate about, uh, but you're supposed to get a job, have a good living, and then work your way up the system. And, and I did that. You know, I went to, uh, I moved down to North Carolina, went to college down here in the Carolinas. Um, I actually had a lot of passion around golf you know, the sport of golf. So I actually uh, became a PJ professional and I taught golf. I love coaching. I've always loved helping people. Um, so I got into teaching golf and I ran a teaching business for many years. Um, did that, I, I would, you know, quote unquote successfully in terms of I built a good following and, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed doing it. But because of a variety of factors, one, I just got burnt out. And two, I saw a big change in golf and what was happening. Um, what's called around 2009, 2010. I decided to make a shift because I realized, hey, I have some other, I have some other things that I'm good at from skill set and other ways I think I can impact the world. And that's where I transitioned into more sales and business and those type of things. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, did not go too long when it really the big thing for me was over the last, let's say five years, I kind of joke and call it my renaissance period. But really what I've done is I've reflected on a lot of decisions I've made earlier in my life and obviously even more recent and had a lot more self-awareness. And when I look back, I realized that 
all the potential that I had, you know, think of everyone says, Hey, you got potential. I wasn't fulfilling that. And I wasn't fulfilling it because I wasn't doing things that ultimately were not only making me fulfilled, but helping folks around me. What I was doing was I was doing what everyone else was doing was I got a job I went to that I kind of liked, but I didn't love. Um, and then I would complain a lot about, you know, either this person has this or that person has that. And what I ultimately was able to do over the last four or five years, um, which has led me a lot of things I'm doing today, is be able to reflect internally and say, hey, a lot of these I can change myself. Mm -hmm. I can actually make the adjustment in my life um, to ultimately be fulfilled, do things that not only I'm passionate about, but, you know, I can make a living at. I can make an impact with people on. Um, and that's what's led to, you know, I'm in software sales. Um right now, but you know, I have my just get started podcast. I'm writing a children's book. I have some other business ventures I'm looking for. Um, so there's some different things that are happening, but I, the reason the podcast is called just get started is that I failed a couple times starting it. And I realized there was a lot of people, Sam might be able to relate to this and may, Merle, may yourself from a podcast yeah, standpoint, but like mm -hmm. you have the fear of putting yourself out there of what are people going to think, you know, mm -hmm. what am I going to talk about? And all these things came to fruition. Um, and eventually I got over the hump and, um, and I just got started to kind of, and that's the, that's where the podcast at. So it's been over two years now, um, that I've been doing it and, um, it, it's been really helpful, um, because one of the things, um, and Sam was talking about this from a finance level, but one of these things where I think there's an opportunity for a lot of us to give back in our own way, try to impact folks. Um, as an example, like I just wrote this ebook for podcasting. It's a short little 10, 15 page ebook. But I've already gotten some good feedback from folks where um, they're like, Brian, I've been wanting to start a podcast. It's really cool to hear your story and some of your struggles and some of the things mm -hmm. that helped you get over that so that maybe I can go and start my own. So just little things like that have been, have been really cool for me. Um, and so anyways, I'm talking around in circles probably on some stuff, but that's a little overview that's, at least. Uh, that's good. I a mean, little that's, tip that's of work where I'm objective. Yeah, that's the objective to really get to know people and really see how they, they've evolved, you know, through the different experience that they, they, they went through. Yeah. And it's quite amazing to see that there's two different backgrounds, but at some point there's a breakthrough where you realize that, you know, you're not fulfilled. But at the same time, you realize that you have the power to change your life and you take action. And that's the only way for you to progress further. So just to, you know, to, to, um, to continue in the same, you know, in the same line, what are the key challenges that you, you go through right now? You've obviously went through quite a lot, but now in where you are in your space, what are the key challenging that, the challenges that you go through? And how do you know, how do you address them? How do you manage them? And, uh, and, and what's the narrative that you're telling yourself to, what tips keep you going, you know? Um, Samuel. Okay. Yeah. So for me, I'm just, I would say for over the last four or five months, um, the, the biggest challenge right now is, a, I want to say effective use of time. I think it's a, mm -hmm. it's a mixture of uh, a few things. So I work most of my business as far as income business is done one-on-one -on -one with people. And so because of that, um, I only have so many hours in a day mm -hmm. and up until probably three or four months ago, I had enough time to meet with all of my clients and to, you know, it, it wasn't stressful. Um, as of, and I would drive, I, I, I like to meet in person. So if they're within like two hours, I would drive to them. Um, mm -hmm. but now I just have too many people, um, who want to meet, which is a good thing, right? It's yeah. definitely the problem you want. Um, but it's, it's forcing me to really hone in and, and make my systems and, and my processes a lot more succinct and also i'm having to do a uh, learn uh how to do business online a lot mm -hmm. more than i have in the past which is that's a whole nother skill set when it comes to communication because you don't always have body language sometimes it's just over the phone and um, so there's a whole another le re level of communication that i'm having to learn to be able to convey concepts especially from the financial perspective the whole industry is conceptual and so being able to convey a concept um not in in place with somebody that's a difficulty and then so there's there's time constraints i'm having to compress my my time and then also i'm learning how to lead and and teach other people how to do what i can do with the degree of accuracy that i could feel confident mm -hmm. that if i get a client 
and I hand them off to somebody that they're going to get the same experience or better than what they would get with me. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a training process, vetting a lot of different people, trying to make sure that the people you're working with, uh, because we all trust ourselves, exactly. Uh, whether we should or not, is that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> exactly. We, we all tend to think that we we are good at what we do, which is probably not true, but we tend to think that. And so, learning to let go of those reins and delegate that's been a struggle for me in the past, um, largely because I, I I think I grew up needing to be in control for survival, and mm -hmm. so then learning that I don't have to be in control um, for survival, and that survival really is in lack of control mm -hmm. that that's a whole nother mindset shift that that for me is is changing and so how i address that or my self-talk is really um comes down to why my, my why for me my mission my vision everything i'm working for is to save families save children and save individuals from these social issues and and so i can't stop at anything to make sure that happens um, and so for me i've got to find new ways to share my message get on podcasts or, or shows mm -hmm. like this to help more people understand um the, just the basics if they just learn a few concepts that, that how their life could change um and just start thinking every day that that's my mission it's not meeting with this next client or scheduling mm -hmm. these things my mission is to save families and if i keep that in the forefront of my mind then it helps me relinquish control a little bit because then I know that I can't help as many people if I'm the only one helping. I have to train people. And so it's forcing me and giving me the confidence to go build other people and help mm -hmm. them lead. Which is, which is strong. And I, and I know I'm in a way almost all guilty of that. You start small, sometimes you're a solo entrepreneur, but when things are starting to scale, you're very reluctant to, to let go. And you can actually get stuck in a spiral where you completely burn out, and uh, and you can't actually you know uh, follow your you know follow your goals and, and and your vision, and and it's actually not helping you. And it's good that you manage to you know to to think through it, and then bring people on board to help you, and then use the technology because that's the beauty of technology. We can you know use the technology to to do more. And uh, not having to, you know, to to, to do all, all those one to one, and stretch our time. What about what about yourself, uh, Brian? How how what are the key challenges that you, you go through right now in what you do? I mean, it can be in your podcast or in your day to day um, uh, professional life. Yeah. And uh, you know. What yeah, I mean. <coughs> I think, and, and Sam made a great point there. One thing I'll go back to, and, and I think Sam and I both talked about this a little bit, is, is the, the, the argument that doesn't get brought up enough is the nature versus nurture, right? Is all of us are, in terms of what we're doing today, like Sammy, I, Sam, I think you brought up a couple things there about, you know, you're doing things to right, help impact people because you had a challenge as a kid, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of those poverty. So it's the same thing. I, I, what I would say is the biggest challenge I've had, and I would encourage everyone to take a reflection on this, is having self-awareness of where my, I'm going to use the word downfall for the more impact, but really like where are my biggest problem areas internally in terms of how I, how I um, maybe it's look at certain individuals or maybe I look at a situation or whatever it is and how do I make that determination to maybe not let it affect me or take a, a positive approach versus, you know, a negative one or what have you. And I think a lot of this comes back to childhood. You know, the things I'm doing today, probably similar to Sam, Mary, maybe yourself if we look, right, is based on how we were raised. So Sam mentioned something earlier, which him and I tied in very well, is I actually had a high school teacher, Mr. Hines. Um, when I was 18, he pulled me aside and he said, Brian, you got a great pitch and tone. You should be on radio someday. And that never left me. And I'm like, and I've had dozens of people say that. I don't know if my voice is good or not, but um, anyway. It doesn't matter though, right? A lot of people, Exactly. A lot, a lot of people um, have said that, though, similar stuff over the last, you know, dozen plus years. And the reason I bring that up is that I think if a lot of folks reflect back on childhood, both the good and the bad, I think it gives you a almost a, a little breadcrumb trail of what you could be doing in your kind of full adult life. And not only from a positive side, and that's kind of some of the things I'm trying to do to impact a lot of the younger generation right now. Um, things that I didn't have as a kid, I didn't think from a knowledge standpoint and experience that I want to help other folks have. So 
so that they can make better decisions as they're growing up. But on the flip side of that, I mean, you asked about challenges. It's around um, one of the big challenges I have is um, I was a middle child. So I didn't get a ton of attention growing up. Um, you know, I had an older brother that was close in age. So it always like following my brother type thing. So I've really had to overcome a lot of that aspect of my life of being able to almost kind of be okay with myself and my body. I don't need a, um, um, acceptance from other people, those type of things. That's been a huge challenge for me, um, you know, kind of neediness, if you will, over the years. And as I've overcome that the last handful of years, and it's still a challenge, um, that has really helped propel me to make a lot of these choices like the podcast and, and other things I'm doing. Because at the end of the day, it's not caring what other people think. Not that I don't take advice or anything like that. It's not caring that if someone doesn't like what I wear, I'm going to change. No, this is what I want to wear. So I think that's been a huge thing for me over the last few years. And I, and I know because I've talked with a lot of individuals, it's a challenge for a lot of people. There's, you know, one of the great things, Gary Vaynerchuk, I follow. Um, he's big in the U.S. I know some folks overseas probably know him as well. But, you know, he taught, one of the big things he said in the keynote a while back was, you know, people have a job they hate to buy things they don't need to impress people they don't like. And I think if you reverse that and you really focus on, hey, what do I really want to do in life? And that helps you make a lot of decisions because it all comes down to choices, right? Like Sam was talking about his time management stuff. It comes down to choices. I, well, I just got to think about B and move forward with A. I can't stop dwelling on it or what have you. So I think it's really important that the choices we make, um, you're set with, you're confident with, and you just move forward in that direction. So those are some of the challenges I deal with today is really just around, you know, how I feel every day, just making sure that I'm making decisions that's best for me, um, you know, my family, and not worrying about the naysayers, if you will. Because there's always going to be folks that – you know, say you shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that. But if I listened to them, I probably wouldn't have started the podcast. I wouldn't be finishing up the children's book. I wouldn't be doing these other things. And the same with y'all, you probably wouldn't be doing the things you are. At some point, you have to overcome that and say, no, no, this is what I want to do. This is how I think I can help people. And ultimately, it leads you down um, that path. So yeah. I think those are a couple of things that folks should look at, um, at least that could help them maybe as a reflection point. And, and that's, uh, you know, and that's a key one because, you know, everything is about, you know, believing in yourself first and uh, the type of thoughts that you put in your head. So if you start to listen to too many, you know, negative people and you don't really focus on staying positive, they can actually destroy your life and without you knowing it. So, I mean, everybody has an opinion, like you said, but it doesn't have to be your opinion. And I really like, yeah. you know, uh, Les Brown when he says that, you know, uh, everybody, I mean, anybody's opinion is, is none of your business. Actually, you have to focus on your own business, on what you want, what you want to accomplish, because at the end of the day, that's what stands for you. That's what actually makes you. And, uh, and, and whatever the, the, you know, the challenge that you have in front of you, you have to be, uh, you know, reconcile everything with yourself, because otherwise you, you, can't, you can't work properly. So going through, you know, all of this, and, uh, and I know, I mean, personally that uh, I often, you know, uh, try to get help from, you know, um, mentors or coach. So what was, you know, uh, the place of, you know, mentors and coach in, uh, in your success, if I can 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 say that to help you to to be the strong person that you you strong will and and, and visionary person that you are you are today. Uh, did you have any coach or did you just you know um, do everything on your own, Samuel? Absolutely, I don't know anybody who hasn't had some form of coach, and that could be uh, the, the interesting thing is people think often that. The, you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. And so they think that they actually have to be in proximity of those people. They, mm -hmm. they don't realize that if you, I, I actually did a Facebook and Instagram live about this a few days ago, because I was talking to somebody and they're like, oh, social media is a waste of time. Don't only, only give yourself a half an hour of social media time because um, it's just, it can consume your life and you can't control it. And it's just negative and bad all the time and news is bad. 
I was like, that, that's such a lower level understanding of social media, right? You can actually use the algorithms in your favor to construct so that every time you pull up in your social media, it's motivational, it's inspirational, it's, it's good news, right? You can subscribe to only and follow only things that you think are positive. You can, by, by what you like and what you give attention to, that dictates what they're going to be telling you because they want you on their platform. So, um, one is you can get around these high level thinking, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, these dreamers out there who are cre actively creating legacies today. You don't have to be directly um, within the same room as them mm -hmm. to be surrounding yourself with them. You can be reading their books um, and constantly be reading their books and listening to their podcasts. I mean, there's so many areas where you can be in, uh, engaged with these people and if you're doing that and if you're actually using and, t and staying up on their content and then you act actually reached out to them on Instagram, on Facebook and said, hey, I love this one thing that you said. It changed my life this way. I would be shocked if you didn't get a response from these people because they're down to earth people who are just in a grind, loving their life and loving serving and wanting to give back as much as possible. So don't underestimate the value of, of mm -hmm. other ways around yourself and become the average of, of greater five people. For me, I've had uh, two or three coaches that really changed my life. My grandpa is one, uh, and there, I have multiple experiences with my grandpa that really changed my life. Another one um, was that about 2017, I had been working in this industry just putting my heart and soul into it, but not getting anywhere. And to December 23rd, 2017, I called, I was listening to a podcast by JLD, um, entrepreneurs on fire. And this woman got on, she offered a 30 minute free con, uh, coaching call. So I was like, I'm doing it. <laughs> I need help. So I got on this phone call with her and within 30 minutes, um, she had walked through and basically it came down to, I just simply didn't believe that I was worthy of being an entrepreneur and running my own business. For whatever reason, wherever that, that thought had come, um, I d deep down inside, I didn't believe I was worthy. So once she brought that to the surface, my logical brain said, of course I'm worthy, right? Just by making that one little 30 minute conversation, um, my income quadrupled from 2017 to 2018. Wow. And then about October of 2018, I was like, hey, that was an awesome experience. I need to step it up again. Went and got another coach and um through through that coaching experience um at my average income in 2019 has rose by three thousand dollars a month right by simply getting coaches and helping them align things i just did another coaching thing and i can already see how it's going to transform my my business because now i'm using more tools to condense my time right so i went and got a coach to help me condense my time because that's where i'm struggling right now and so you're all, I think everybody is always going to have a coach or need a coach. And if they, if they're not directly with you and you can't speak with them directly, go get their book, go buy their book, read their books. They've all been putting out content, trying to help you mm -hmm. and don't, don't let that go to waste and think you need to speak directly to them before you've even taken advantage of the stuff they've already given you. So, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And, and, and really, you know, something that, uh, we need to understand, I mean, on a personal level, on a professional level, is that we always have opportunity to learn. Uh, it's, and we have the tools. It's just a matter of getting after it and, and putting the effort and then reaching out. Uh, you, like you said, you don't have to, to know those people. There's not the technology. You have the books. You have the podcasts. You have uh, TV shows or whatever it is. Uh, to learn from and, uh, and and there's no excuse at the end of the day um, People yeah. find excuses, but there's no excuses at all uh, Everything is yeah. Good. Yeah, Brian, what about your what's your experience with coaching and, and mentoring? Or mentoring? Yeah, I mean, I, and I was just gonna add on that I think if we kind of bucket these uh, to what Sam's talking about, I think, you know, you have your mentors, right? People that you physically can talk with. And then what I, what I've kind of coined or said is virtual mentors, right? It's like, you have these folks, you know, I talk about Gary Vaynerchuk a lot because when I uncovered Gary back in 2011, that was a big shift for me, big shift in my thinking and, and my health. Um, so I think bucketing those individuals, you know, on the, the physical side, if I will, 
um, you know, my grandparents had a massive influence on me. And the reason is I had, well, I have four totally different grandparents. Um, so they all have their different impacts on me. But what's nice is as I grew up and as I started to really observe and like figure out, hey, what little pieces can I take from each and how they impacted their community and their family members stuff, that was really huge for me. So it was more like they weren't physically teaching me it, but it was more like me observing kind of just their actions. Um, and then ultimately that had led, like I, I tell this story a lot is, you know, my grandmother, we used to always go over there for like dinners and stuff like that on the weekend, what have you. She watched me a lot. And this is my mom's mother. And she um, she used to always cook dinner for everyone, but mm -hmm. she'd never eat with us. She was always finishing up eating or uh, cooking or cleaning while we're all eating. And I always remembered, like, she always ate last. She never was, like, sitting. And, and then she'd be, like, shoveling the food in, like, 30 minutes later, you know, like, as it's getting cold. And I always remember that as, like, that kind of servant mentality. So that was one thing, like, I learned from my grandmother that I've kind of tried to take with me later in life. Um, more currently, yes, I've had several folks, um, and I've had communities, as I call it. So not only individuals, but as a collective group. Um, I've been fortunate. I'll give them a shout out because I think they're probably one of the most phenomenal entrepreneur groups in the in the world. It's called NextGen. Um, you go to ngsummit.com is their website. But there's probably a couple thousand members. Um, and it was started by these two 18-year-olds, and now 23, 24, but Justin Alapazan and Dylan Gabrielli, um, and started by those guys, and they have this conference every year, and they have a whole community of folks where I can call and chat with people and have, you know, individual conversations. I've become friends with a lot of these folks. They've asked me for advice, so it's been a great community to be involved in. So more than just individual uh, people, having like a community, they have a whole Facebook group and everything where you can ask questions and get feedback. I think that's one of the nice things to that, you know, Sam's point of the, you know, you're kind of the average of the five people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. I think just going back to, again, reflecting on where do you want to go in life and do you want to be around negativity or do you want to be around positivity, optimism, those type of things. If you make that choice on the, on the ladder, it gives you an opportunity to choose those right individuals, whether that's a mentor or coach or just people that you can just bounce things off of. They might be, you might not consider them a coach, but they're just friends or colleagues you can bounce things off of, and they're gonna be a listener um, versus kind of talking down to you or anything like that. So I think there's, like I said, I, I think we've all had people, some have come into our life for a short time, others have been there for a long time, um, others have impacted up in a massive way, some are very small, like Sam said, that one little thing that, you know, she said it changed the thing. I think we have all those type of people. As you're being aware that they exist, and being kind of open to um, any advice or insight and then ultimately trying to pair that back to your life and where it can help you. You don't have to take everything, mm -hmm. but taking a few key nuggets and then applying them to your life. That's the biggest thing. People can say the greatest information if you don't apply it to your life exactly. to make it better. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, so I think, and that goes back to what we were talking about earlier with like, um, you know, the challenges and those type of things. I think folks just have to overcome um, and they overcome by realizing that there's a better way that they want a better life for themselves. And they have to, sometimes it's harder, but you have to take that path less traveled and ultimately to get to that more fulfilling life. Um, so I think, yeah, absolutely. If people can seek out mentors or coaches, they absolutely should. Mm -hmm. So I, I think at the end of the day, everything is a decision. So like I said, everything is, it's all available. There's help available. Just have to reach out, ask. It can be formally like, you know, having a former coach or mentor, or like you said, you know, around, ask around people, you know, to people around us in our communities to guide us and to, to give us, uh, you know, uh, 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 some advice, you know, and we have the choice as well to follow or not to follow that, that's come back to us. So, I mean- Well, if I, if I, can, say one more, if I can say one more thing on that, and I think this is really important. Remember, the best or worst coach in our lives is our own self. Exactly. So if you're continuing to tell yourself that you're not good enough, that you're not, you know, that, that person's got lucky or anything like that, that is going to weigh you down. If you continue to have positive reinforcement, if you kind of look in the accountability mirror, if you will, every day and you say like, nope, I'm going to do this because this is what I want. Uh, this is where I want to go in my life. This is how I want to impact the world then there's a really good chance that you're going to get there. So I think the biggest thing, yeah, coaches and mentors are great, but 
we have to look inside each and every one of ourselves mm -hmm. and realize that the words that we say to ourselves are the most important. So you have that choice going back to that. Is, is it positive or is it negative? Um, and that really can determine a lot of uh, different lifestyle or, or choices where you go in life. Powerful. Yeah, it's all come down to us. Whatever, whatever happened, it's, you know, it's what we think that we actually start to materialize. So it's very powerful, powerful. Thanks for, for reminding us. Uh, so going through all, you know, this journey and, you know, obstacles and things like that, how, you know, wh what are your, I would say, your top tips for success? You think that, okay, this is really, you know, what helped me when I was really down and it, it was really key to my success to, to be in the position where I am right now. I, I'm just looking for two or three um, key things that you, has been really uh, important in, in your success. Yeah. yeah, for me, I think it really comes down to clarity of what I want. Um, if I were to, if I were to overall, it's clarity of what I want and I de and identifying my identity. So before I ever got into, um, before I ever got into any industry, uh, I have been fiercely committed to who I am as an individual and what my purpose is, my purpose, um, beyond all else. And this, like the highest purpose that Samuel Knickerbocker has is to spread love throughout the universe. Like that is, that's the number one thing. So that keeps me grounded in how I interact with people, how I, how, how I speak to people, the, the, the people that I choose to be around, everything is, is based on love. And then second is I'm, I'm here to heal a version of myself. And that version of myself has certain issues. The, the, the irony about the whole topic is the most people, like the, the majority of my clientele is actually divorced women aged 35 to 45 years old with two or three kids. And, wow. and the reason for that is because we went through a similar emotional journey, even though that we didn't go through the same physical journey, we go through the emotional journey of having been codependent on somebody or something or something mm -hmm. and having that shape our identity, having that ripped away from us and then having to, well, not having to, but choosing to become so independent that nothing can hurt you, right? So independent that no, you don't care if, what anybody says about you. And there's value in that at, as a process, but if you stop there, then you're not going to get that benefit of growth. And so that was something uh, that, that I'm still working on. I'm, I'm conscious of, but becoming interdependent and allowing yourself to have some vulnerabilities by sharing the load. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, that's a difficult mental process for people to go through, especially when it comes to finance and the protection of their family. Right. These women who have lost their, lost the, the main breadwinner in most cases, especially in the environment that I live in, um, in the culture of Utah, most women aren't working. They aren't mm -hmm. providing for their family. So when they get divorced, if they want their kids, then they've got to go provide for their family as a single parent. And, and so they build up this massive amount of wealth and, and income, but they have no fulfillment because they're purely doing it out of fear and scarcity of, I never want to be caught unawares again. And so how to shift that mindset from no fulfillment, maintain the high income, but shift into what fulfills them. That's my journey. That's what I had to do. And so that's ends up being who I end up speaking to most. And I understand that. Um, but clarity of who I am and what I represent, I think is probably the biggest thing. Uh, and it has to be the foundation. If, if you're going to build a business, but you don't know what gives you fulfillment, you don't know what your core values are, and you have no idea how you want to be remembered in, in 200 years from now, then then you might get to the end of your life and look back and think, man, I wasted my life. I should have been doing X, Y, or Z. And I don't want you to feel that way. And so that's why my mission is, is really to fuel your legacy and help people um, make money to, to fuel whatever their passion is, whatever brings them fulfillment and aligns with their, their goals. Wow, that's uh, that's very noble. And, and, you know, funny enough is... Uh, we actually realize that a lot of people don't actually know their mission and there's like, you know, you're just errant, you try things, you go there and then you don't really know where, where to go. And it, it's something very, you know, 
something that we need to focus on. And it's sometimes, you know, just traveling, we, we put so much effort to, you know, plan everything for a, for a trip, but yet we don't really sit down and, and plan our life and see really where we want to be uh, several years from now or what legacy we want to, to, to leave. And it's, it's very important to have, you know, people like you coming, <laughs> reminding us that, you know, we need to do that first before things start to go the, the right way. And uh, so thank, thanks, Samuel. Um, Brian, um, what about you? <laughs> on, on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and there were some good points there by Sam. I, I think for me, the, again, we can probably sit here for hours and, and probably go back and forth on a lot of good stuff that people could do. I think probably if I laid it to two uh, for the time we have, one is I, I call it my North Star, right? Try, I think, you know, you guys have mentioned mission, right, and mantra. There could be, you know, your own, you know maybe it's a statement you have that you live by. I deemed it my North Star because, as we know, you never can catch the North Star. But instead of putting a stake in the ground, as an example, right, someone might say, Brian, I want to be a CEO in 10 years. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean, though? Well, once you're a CEO, are you done? Like, are you retired? Like, what, what does that mean? And then are you going to be happy for the next 20 or 30 or 40 doing that? So what I, what I would encourage everyone out there is to figure out their North Star. What is the path they want to go towards? So for me, it's impacting, the ne as I mentioned earlier, the next generation in terms of a positive and optimistic approach around a healthy living um, and giving them the tools and the knowledge so they can make the best decisions kind of in their lives so they can help impact the world for, ye for years to come and centuries to come. Well, the reason if I can define that, right, as my North Star, now all the choices that I make going forward, right? So for instance, if I got asked to speak, not that anyone would ask me to speak somewhere, but let's say I got asked to speak and it was for some random topic that had nothing to do with the North Star, it's an easy no for me, mm -hmm. right? Because I know where my North Star is. So I think the decisions, we keep going back to choices and decisions. If I have a defined North Star, I can decide, do I want to do this mm -hmm. podcast or not, not this podcast, but like my podcast, or do I want to do, um, a, do I want to write a book or do I want to work at this job or this company? I think that helps people. I'm not saying, listen, everyone out there is not an entrepreneur. Everyone out there doesn't want to be a small mm -hmm. business owner. Anyone out there doesn't want to do that. But I still think if you're going to work a full-time job because you have to, maybe that's just how things are. Sorry. Right, they, right now, because until you make the change, mm -hmm. then do things that help get you that next level. Look a few years out. Don't think it ha the answer has to be tomorrow. So if you're saying, hey, this is my North Star, whatever it is, hey, you know what? It might take a few years to get there or 10 years. But mm -hmm. what am I doing each and every day to impact right. that decision or that North Star? Um, and I think what happens is we get all very short-sighted. You know, I'll give you an example. I'm a big, I'm big into fitness. I'm a big CrossFitter. Um, fitness and health and those type of things are a huge part of my life. It's, it's someone that says, Brian, yeah, I want to get in great shape. Okay. Well, what are you doing? Well, I had a, you know, I went to McDonald's today and, you know, I had a, a big, you know, supersized meal or whatever. I don't know if they still do supersized, but anyways, they have a big meal. But they're like, oh, it's just one day. It's not going to affect it. That, those type of decisions affect mm -hmm. the long term. So again, I think the biggest thing most people can do is, and, and what helped me was defining my North Star which has ultimately helped me make better decisions in my life and will continue to help me make the better decisions going forward. Um, the second point, which is kind of similar to that, is being self-aware. If I don't understand who I am as a person, where my, um, my pitfalls are, where that I'm getting, you know, I'm kind of stubbing my toe on certain things, I can't get to the next level. I can't have, you know, Sammy's a great word, growth. I can't have growth. And so I think if we, if we give ourselves that opportunity to really reflect and, and really be honest with ourselves of where we actually have our shortfalls, um, I don't want to use the word weaknesses because they may not be weaknesses. It's just things mm -hmm. that, you know, you have to overcome. And that can help us get to the North Star that we want to get to. So those things, I think, goes hand in hand. Um, and it's not a long path. I've been on probably for, I would say, five years. I've mm -hmm. been kind of on this journey. And I feel like I'm just starting to get momentum. I wouldn't even use the word success. I don't even know if I'd define myself as successful. That's a word it's that gets thrown around a lot. I don't even, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know. It's always, it's an ongoing, you know, uh, thing. Who knows, right? But what I can tell is I can look back a year ago 
mm-hmm. or two years ago, and I can see a lot of growth. I can see a lot of change in who I was then and who I am now. And that what, that's what will ultimately keeps me motivated going forward. So I'd encourage everyone, don't be short-sighted with time um, and just understand things take a lot of time, but you have to put that effort in. Create your North Star, have, have that self-awareness, that accountability, and ultimately I think that could uh, propel people maybe to that next level they want to get to. Uh, I hope the audience is taking note because there's a lot, you know, a lot of uh, good, good insight here. It's that, uh, you know, having the long-term vision and then the reflection, you know, because I think that's the part that we're struggling with is that, okay, what is our, you know, our, what, why, you know, what is the aspect of our personality we created what we, we're living right now and reflect on that and see what we did well, what we didn't do well, and learn from every single experience and grow, you know, through that. And so that's a, a big one to remind, you know, to remind people, to remind the audience um, uh, to, to do. Uh, so we're getting, I mean, we're getting at the end of the show and uh, I think you, you've probably addressed, because that's the, my, my best question, it's about the legacy, what do you want to be remembered for? And I think you've in a way address it already and uh, but just in you know in one sentence and and then we'll, we'll close out for for today uh, Samuel. sure yeah so my, my legacy is at, at to be empowering families and other individuals with the financial confidence to go build and create their legacy and and that's that's really what i want to promote that's what i want to do and i believe that that the fastest way to do that is to helping the the, the lower socioeconomic uh, families. That's why I do my podcast, uh, Fuel Your Legacy podcast. That's why I wrote my book, Fuel Your Legacy, The Nine Pillars to Build a Meaningful Legacy. Um, and you can get that on Amazon or on my website, Um I, my, my goal is to just give away as much content as I can to help people start thinking about this and start thinking, what would my legacy be? What do I want my legacy to be? Um, what do I want people to be talking and saying about me in 200 years from now? Like yeah. there's so much stuff that happens day to day that just flat out doesn't matter when you start thinking about how do I want to be remembered in 200 years from now? Uh-huh. I mean, think 200 years ago, that's a uh, George Washington. Yeah, exactly. And people time. are actually scared, you know, because now it's about, you know, about the now, you know, they don't even want to think two years or five years in a head it's just i want to to know everything now and yet it's not about the now it's about you know what you're gonna you know be remembered for in like you said 200 years and even more uh brian your last uh the last one how do you want to be remembered it's similar to kind of I mentioned before. I mean, yeah. for, for me, it's it's twofold, right? I want to I want to be able to impact, like I said, the next generation. I want to be able to let them understand that we all have an opportunity to do great things to impact the world. Uh, listen, I'm nothing special, right? I, as I mentioned, I came from a middle class family, upstate New York, kind of the traditional life. I just decided to make a tough decision and change the entire scope of my life uh, because I wanted to do a lot of things different. And it just took it a lot of hardship and time to do that. Everyone can do that. Everyone can have a fulfilled and happy life. And I think if they do, ultimately that impacts us. There's a lot of divisiveness, especially in the U.S. right now. Um, there's a lot of challenges that are going on. I think if people are happier, they're more fulfilled in life, that's ultimately going to make the world a better place. So if I can have that impact in a small way, whether it is through the podcast or books or who knows, just talking to people, um, and that obviously reflects on other people that they talk with, um, you know, that's going to mean the world to me. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know. I always want people to, you know, everyone always says, like the people I talk with, they're like, Brian, you're not a glass half full, you're, you're three quarters of the way full. Like I'm always like optimistic, positive about where our world, you know, can be and, and where we will go, I think. Um, so I don't know, you know, if, I, if, I, if at my funeral someday, uh, hopefully that's a long way down the road, but who knows? Um, you know, hopefully folks are just like, dude, he was just a, he was just a good dude. He was just a really, you know, he cared about people. Mm-hmm. Um, and he want and, and he wanted people to be happy and fulfilled in life. I mean, he did everything he could to, to kind of make that possible. Mm-hmm. That, that would be cool. So, yeah. okay. So that's, that's fantastic. Just to, you know, for the audience, uh, if they want to continue the conversation with you, 
where can they connect? And uh, we also really want to know if you have an event coming up or a program or you know something that uh, we can plug in uh, if we if we want to to know more about what you do and learn from from you, uh, Samuel. Yeah, so for me, I have uh, probably the best places to reach me are on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'm on mo almost every social media platform, but not active. Um, so, so, uh, so Instagram or Facebook are the best places to reach out to me. You can go onto my website and you can get tons of free content there. And, and my email, my phone number, everything's on there. So you can reach out to me there. And then um, actually I will be speaking at another event here. I have a few events. If you're in Utah area or you're going to be in the area, January 3rd and 4th, I'm going to be speaking at an event called Strength in Your World. Um, and then if you're in the sales industry at all, um, then Door to Door Con, D to D Con is happening um, on the 16th, 17th, and 18th in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'll be speaking there. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to get out as speak as much as I can, and I love it. So if you, if you want me to come speak there, whatever your thing is going on, I'd love mm -hmm. to support you in any way that I can. Okay. Thanks, Samuel. Um, Brian? Yeah, my website's probably the, 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 the best, right? BrianAndraco.com. Everything's kind of housed there. I am on you know, Instagram and Twitter, LinkedIn. It's just, you know, Brian Andreco. You can find me there at Brian Andreco. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, the big, the biggest thing right now, like I said, I have my Just Get Started podcast, you know, it's on Apple and, you know, Google Play and all the, you know, all the others, Spotify, et cetera. Um, and, you know, I interview really trying to, again, carve their own path in life. And I have some really interesting folks uh, that are on there. So go check that out. I think I've, I just launched episode 80 this week. Uh, so that's been going well for two years. Um, I'm finishing up my first children's book. Um, it's a oh, book really? actually I table for, yeah, I, well, it's actually a cool story. I won't derail the, uh, the interview now, but like, you know, I wrote it six years ago, half of it, and then I tabled it because I didn't feel I had the support or the confidence or anything. Mm -hmm. I picked it back up this back year and, and I'm finishing it up and it should launch in early spring next year, but, um, it's about my son. It's called Luke's first round of golf. And, um, it's my first children's book. I have a few others I'm be writing as well. So I got a couple other things in the hopper, but those are the two big kind of mm -hmm. going forward. Um, and I do encourage folks if, if you want to start a podcast, Sam and I, and, and Mary, we could talk about this all day podcasting. Um, I wrote an ebook, uh, this past week. It just launched. Um, it's a, it's a short read. Um, it's mm -hmm. called the bootstrapper's guide to podcasting. So really it's just kind of the, to hope help people maybe take that first step. Um, if they do want to start their own podcast, um, that's on my website. So go check that out. And, um, and if they want, you know, reach out. If they want any help, insight, direction, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm here. I'd love to help people out and uh, give them that. So um, those are a few things, I guess. But, yeah, BrianAndreco.com is probably the best way to uh, connect with me. Fantastic. It's been, uh, you know, a tremendous hour. And, uh, I'm, I mean, I've learned so much. And I've, I've really loved uh, the discussion that we had today. And, you know, I want to remember the audience to... To really, I mean, to, to go back to the, to, to, to replay that and get, you know, those, uh, those tips, this insight that uh, uh, Samuel and, and Brian shared and understand that it's not really how you started. It's really where you're going and uh, you, you basically never limited it and the decision comes back to you. You have to step into your power and you have to take massive action if you really want to create this, uh, you know, great impact uh, in, in the world. But first, you know, better yourself and then, uh, you know, bring a positive impact to the world and make, and make your world better. So thank you very much, um, Samuel and, uh, and Brian. It's been a pleasure. And uh, so we'll, I mean, we'll stay connected and, and you're probably gonna, some people are probably gonna reach out to you or to continue the discussion, or maybe we, we have to do a part two to, uh, <laughs> to go. Yeah, to thank you. Thank you for having <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So I got lots you. of notes. Take care and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Bye. Yep. Bye bye. Yeah.